Well, you know, advocates of net neutrality are always telling us about the great things it's intended to do. Things like promote free speech and competition and innovation. But although I vaguely remember when I first used the internet, I still remember sitting on my grandmother's knee as a small baby, and she said to me, she goes, Michael, the information superhighway to hell is paved with good intentions. <laughs> so what I want to do is, to, instead of talking about intentions, I want to talk about the inter what net neutrality really does. Right? Now to do that, we've got to start by dealing with three foundational myths behind net neutrality. Myth number one is it's necessary to solve problems that would otherwise be there. Now, Nick's already taken care of that one, so how about deal with the other two? Okay, the second myth is that net neutrality is neutral. Okay, one reason it's a myth is because different applications have different needs from the internet. Video conferencing needs a much higher speed signal and more reliable um, signal than something like email. So to say we're going to treat them equally is not to treat them equally. It's a much bigger problem for video conferencing. Now, one thing you'll notice, because I sort of go a little bit in back, we were all told to stand on some X's here. And I have tremendous respect for Tom, and I've worked with him over the years. But when he stood out in the middle and he told you that the internet in the good old days was neutral, he was both literally and figuratively off the mark. Okay? <laughs> oh, and by the way, for those of you who are younger, literally means literally. Think about the logic. <laughs> okay, because the fact is, the NSF net, the precursor to the commercial internet, prioritized interactive traffic, as it should. Now, there's a second reason that net neutrality is not neutral. We always hear this thing, oh, we need net neutrality because otherwise big, powerful companies will have fast lanes. Well, you know what? They do. And it has nothing, it's nothing net neutrality is going to stop. Google, Facebook, Amazon, they spend literally billions of dollars because they have built private fast lanes. Google has proprietary, not Google, I apologize. Facebook has proprietary specifications for fiber. They build their own integrated circuits because the servers other people would have to use aren't good enough. So what does net neutrality have to do with this? Well, it ensures that ISPs can't help small firms have higher speed access. So if you have billions to spend on an internet of your own, net neutrality is a great thing. But if you need help, it's a problem. Now, the third myth is that all data are created equal. And I want to contrast two situations. In one, you've got a bunch of kids sitting around, and they're playing Wolfenstein. Now, for those of you who are not up on your classic games, Wolfenstein is a multiplayer game that involves trying to kill Nazis with supernatural powers. The Nazis have the supernatural powers, not you. Okay? So, fine, you're using the internet to do that. Over here, we've got a surgeon who's trying to do remote telesurgery to save somebody's life who lives in a remote area. Surgeon can't get there. According to net neutrality, those two are equally deserving. Okay? I don't subscribe to that view. Thank you.